In this video, I'm gonna show you how to design high converting email templates for your Shopify brand within Klaviyo, even if you have the artistic IQ of a rock like myself. Trust me, I'm the right person to learn this from because my agency only does email and SMS marketing for Shopify brands. And we spit out dozens and dozens of designs like these on a daily. And if you wanna see the type of difference good design and good copy can make to your email conversions, check out this. This is a brand that we onboarded about a week ago. We were able to instantly triple their returns with emails in our first campaign without a crazy sale or anything like that. Let's dive into it. So this is a template that I was able to put together in around 10 minutes for a brand called Akko, which is a coffee alternative brand that's like containing nootropics, mushrooms, and that kind of stuff. So let me show you how this design is done. So with every email, there's certain components that can never be missed, right? Obviously you wanna have the logo at the top of the email. You wanna have some sort of banner image. You wanna have call to actions, right? The rest like, these unique selling point comparison tables and the reviews. This is all more so just like stuff that you can kind of pick and choose to add whenever you want into your email templates. And I'm just gonna show you how to build all of them in this video. By the way, if you're a seven figure brand watching this, you should definitely not be doing your email marketing yourself because the thing that's gonna actually get you to eight figures or in the very high seven figures is gonna be acquisition, right? So if you're a founder watching this, you should outsource your retention needs to us book in a call first link in the description. Okay, now let's actually do this. So first of all, to get the logo, you essentially wanna create it inside of Figma. Main reason being is because with Klaviyo, whenever you try to put a logo block inside of Klaviyo, if you open the email on your mobile, what's gonna happen is not only is it not gonna be optimized for dark mode, but also it's gonna get stretched. Right? So that's why if you open emails from certain brands, their logo seems absolutely huge on mobile and it's because that's Klaviyo's native way of optimizing it. So the easiest way for you to get around this is, an, is essentially to design this in Figma. So what we normally do is we put like a rectangular block at the top and then add the logo as like a PNG file, okay? So once you do this, the rest of the design, you kind of set the tone for it. Oh, by the way, with the frame, always set the width to 1000 pixels wide. Reason being is because too wide is gonna make the file size too big, too small, then it's gonna kind of look a bit stretched, right? So generally speaking, best practice says we should be between 750 pixels all the way up to around 1. 1,200. We like to stick around the 1,000 mark for all of our templates across the board. Once this is done, I like to always add branded color swatches. So in this case, we're doing a sample for this brand called Akka. And how you get the color swatches for a brand if you don't have their brand guidelines is by going on the website and using this tool called Color Pick Eyedropper. And what that will allow you to do is essentially get the hex code for all of the colors. Generally speaking, we like to have no more than three colors at a time. This is to keep the email templates looking pretty on brand and not too kind of like busy with too many colors. Unless kind of like rainbows and a lot of color variation is specialized to your brand, I would recommend sticking with around two or three colors per email. So you can see, the color swatches I've identified is basically this uh, beige color, this orange color, and a black, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna design now the most important part of the email, which is actually gonna be the banner. So with the banner, it's really important that you pick the right creatives. In this case, I've just chosen to use their hero image for their product page because it actually fits quite well because generally speaking with banners, you wanna convey a, a couple of things, right? You wanna convey what product you're selling and also, try to highlight a few unique selling points of the product without actually explicitly saying it with words. So in this case, obviously with it being a coffee alternative, you know, we wanna highlight the actual product and it clearly says a coffee alternative. And then we also showcase the preparation method, which is basically just a bit of water in a glass, you spoon it in, you stir it and boom, preparation is done. You wanna sell as much of the product as possible without actually using words because the amount of characters you can use in the banner is very limited. What do I mean by this? Well, when I was doing the sample copy for this brand, where I basically took this from is essentially the homepage, right? Where it says, the world's first nootropic coffee alternative. Now, the problem with putting that in there is you can see that it's, it's really long, 
right? So essentially with the banner, you don't want to clog it up with a lot of words. You want to reduce character count by as much as possible, which is why I was able to shorten it to just world's first nootropic coffee alternative, right? It conveys the exact same message without using a ton of words. Once you have this, the next most important thing that you need to be inserting is the call to action. So this is something in email marketing where we say we always are designing above the fold, meaning whenever someone opens the email within their mobile phone, you want them to be able to see the banner and also the call to action without needing to scroll, right? That's why we design everything, make it kind of more mobile friendly. That's why we always have the CTA fairly high up in the email template to make it very easy, easily visible to everyone. Now with CTAs, it's really important that it mimics the style of buttons on the actual website because you want to train people to know exactly where to click because by them joining your list, they've already been on your website. So you don't wanna have any discrepancies between your email designs and your website. So you can see on Akko's website, they use kind of pill-shaped buttons and I'm gonna show you exactly how to replicate something like that. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna first of all create a rectangle like this, right? And then what you're gonna do is go to the right-hand side in Figma where there's this like corner radius symbol and you're gonna set it to whatever would make it kind of like completely round. Or if it's just like rectangles with rounded edges, then you can kind of drop this number to let's say a 10 and you can see the edges now suddenly become round. But if you increase the number to let's say a hundred or whatever, then you can see it instantly it becomes a pill shaped button, right? And once this is created, you want to kind of align it to somewhere in the center. So initially I, I put it here, but Again, this banner currently lacks a little bit of description, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just add like a one-liner highlighting what the product is about. And you can basically drag and drop something like this. This is again, just a rewording of what was on the website already. So once this is done, you can kind of align it like this and boom, now you have a banner. Now from here, this is where creativity really kind of starts because generally speaking, logo, banner, and then CTA is fairly standard across all email designs. In terms of what you can add to the other sections, there's only really several routes you can go down, right? You can add like a discount block to feature some sort of discount code. You can add product comparisons, unique selling points. You can add long form copy reviews, user-generated content, authority blocks like featured in Forbes, featured in Glamour, that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Like basically logos of publications. But at the end of the day with email designs, there's only so many block variations that you can actually add, right? So I'm gonna show you exactly what the most important and the most common ones are. And from there, you can basically go wild. So the one that we're gonna focus on today is basically this comparison table because it's already on their website, all nicely laid out. So you can see they have this uh, comparison table right down at the bottom, which outlines their main difference between their traditional competitor, which is coffee, right? So adding this in is super easy. If you're a consumable brand, this is very easy to replicate. So you literally just need to go into Canva or basically any software that makes design really easy. You can even do this in Figma. And the beauty of creating elements like this is once this graphic is created, you could literally reuse it over and over again, right? So it's basically a bunch of shapes with a few lines separating down the middle, aligning the text to a certain margin on the box, adding some tick signs and you're basically done. Now, how this applies if you're not a consumable brand is through, for example, like price comparison. So if you're a fashion brand, let's say, you can compare the type of fabric that you use in your apparel versus your competitors. So let's say you use 100% cotton or like cashmere or silk, whereas your competitors are using polyester, elastothane, that type of stuff. That's a really good thing to insert as a comparison table. You can also compare price points. So for example, you can say that your t-shirts costs 30 bucks, whereas someone else's costs like 60, right? That kind of stuff. Now, it's really important when you're creating a piece of graphic like this, is you're sticking to the facts, right? Because if you stick to the facts, then your legal exposure is very, very limited. So with comparison tables like this, particularly when you're comparing against like another brand, you really, really need to make sure that you're casting out all of your opinions, right? So for example, you can't say something like, this brand equals good, this brand equals bad. That's, that's kind of like 
subjective. In order to create something like this, you literally just create like a sub height heading in here, boom, and then you essentially would just be able to drag this graphic right over here. Now you might be wondering, Boyan, this email looks like super weird, and it's literally just because of the background color. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna set the background color on the frame entirely by going over to, by clicking the frame and then going over to fill, and then you just select the color that was basically in one of the swatches. So you can see that this email is already shaping up quite nicely. Now let's talk about the reviews because the reviews is where kind of like you need a bit more graphical design skills in terms of like aligning images and that kind of stuff. So there's several ways that you can actually present reviews. Number one way is basically to just take the review itself, right? Add some stars to it. And if you wanna have multiple reviews, it's super easy. All you gotta do is drag this out, center the text, boom, you got that. And then you just separate it by stars, right? So what you would do is you would go in here, select all the stars, tie it over to this, and then you would essentially just be able to duplicate a re the reviews like so. Something like this, right? That's one way of presenting reviews. Another way is basically incorporating UGC. So in this case, what we like to do with UGC arrangements is we like to put it kind of side by side. So you would essentially take a review, add some stars, and then put the UGC content right here, tie it to the actual review itself, and add a subheading that says something like, you know, our customers agree, right? So this is pretty easy to do from a review standpoint. You can also even use GIFs. So for example, if you have a wide collection of user-generated content, what you could do is essentially just design a GIF where it just shows all of the different people that consumes your product, insert into here. Obviously, when you actually upload it onto Klaviyo, you need to make sure to upload it as like a separate image block because what happens is if you try to render the entire email as a GIF, what's gonna happen is it's gonna make the size really big because it's gonna treat the rest of the design as kind of like quote unquote moving blocks also. Once you add your review, you gotta remember to create more than one CTA button. It's really important that you do this because what happens is if you're on mobile and someone's kind of scrolling on the email, the last thing you want happen is basically they need to scroll all the way up to the bottom, not see a button and need to scroll all the way to the top to find where to click, right? So that's gonna help you increase your click-through rate significantly if you just put more buttons in the email design. Now, this design doesn't look bad, right? So what you're gonna do is, if you're once you're satisfied with the design, you're gonna go to slices, you're gonna go into Figma and hit slice, and you're gonna create different slices. So for example, when you're doing this, let's say you're promoting multiple products in this email, what you can do is, let's say you're, let's say you're promoting multiple products within the same email, what you're gonna to wanna to do is have multiple call to action links linking to the different product pages that you're promoting. Right? So this is where slicing becomes really, really useful. So what you do with slicing is basically you can do this, highlight this section of the email, and if you were to go to slice one, let's say, you hit export, it only exports like this section of the email, and you can see it's highlighted by the dashed lines, right? This way, when you upload it into Klaviyo, you can just upload it as separate image blocks, and then you can set the URL to point to wherever you want it to go. So now that you're happy with the design, and you've put them into various slices, I'm gonna show you exactly how to export this the correct way into Klaviyo and not risk you landing into spam. So what you're gonna do is, first of all, you're gonna go into the slices and you're gonna export them. When you click export slice, you're gonna be doing it in PNG file. So in this case, I'm just gonna name it Akka Demo 1. So now what you're gonna do is, you're gonna go to a website called TinyPNG or TinyJPEG. It just depends on if you export it in PNG or JPEG. And you're gonna upload the PNGs that you just did. Now you can see it's reduced the size from 600 kilobytes and almost one megabyte down to 200 and 300 kilobytes, much smaller, much faster to load. You're gonna hit download all and it's gonna come into a little zip file. You're gonna unzip it into a little zip folder right here. Once you're in Klaviyo, you're obviously gonna need to select this recipient segment. You're gonna continue to content and then you're gonna put in a subject line and a preview text. Once this is done, you're gonna click the drag and drop builder. And in terms of templates, I would go over to basic and then just choose the most basic template basically, because this doesn't really matter. So now once you're in here, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and delete the text block. 
And then from here, you're gonna upload your images. Click upload, attach, and you're gonna upload slice one first, and then you're gonna hit duplicate, and then you're gonna upload the second slice. What you'll notice is when you're uploading the slices, you can see that there's this really like annoying border that's like white between the slices. So what you're gonna do is, this is to do with padding, right? So you're gonna click on one of the images and then you're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom and you're gonna delete, you're gonna set the padding to zero. So this is set to zero, toggle off the padding and then toggle off the padding here as well. So once this is done, you can see now it fills the width. You're gonna do the exact same on the second slice. Toggle the padding off, remove the bottom and left and right padding. So once this is done, you can see now you have like a flawless, pretty nice looking email design and you're gonna insert the link addresses in here and you're also gonna describe the alt text. So for example here, it would be like Akka, uh, coffee, alternative and then here it would be like something along the lines of uh, reviews our customers love us and then unique selling USP unique selling points something like that right and then link address wise you just want to ins point it to whatever product page you want to drive the traffic to and before you send, make sure to preview and test. So you can see this is what it's gonna look like on desktop, same thing with mobile. But the problem is this is not like super accurate just cause a lot of mobile aspect ratios are a little bit different. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit send test and you're gonna send it to your own email address, send it, open it up with your mobile. It's really important that you do it this way because most email opens come from the phone and you're gonna just double check all of the CTAs are going to the right places, subject line and preview text is going to the right places as well. And you're done. This is how you create beautifully high converting Klaviyo email designs. And if you're a seven figure brand, book in a call with us. We're gonna crush emails for you because we do a good job for dozens and dozens of brands every single day. So yeah, hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one.